Okay, let's get started by looking at my forked repository. You can observe from here that we are forked from the arista-net-devops-community forward slash atd-avd repo. In other words, all the files that you see here are my local copy on my master branch. And these are the files that we will manipulate and change as we run through the playbooks. To give you an idea of what we're going to do, we'll take a look at the playbooks. And the main playbook that we're going to look at today is the cv-deploy. And what I want to do is kind of walk you through the playbook and also give you an idea about the roles. So this is the, the Arista test drive repo that I forked. I also have a dependency for the ABD, which is the Arista Validated Design, which is a collection that I have to make available in an execution environment, uh, working with the Ansible Automation Platform to be able to run uh, and execute playbooks from that EE. And I need to make those collections uh, available that are necessary. So the three collections are the, the collection for the CVP, um, also the collection for the EOS, and thirdly, we have the validated content in the collection of roles from the AVD. So that is actually this repo over here. And we'll walk through some of these roles that we're calling in my playbook. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at that. Well, one of the salient points that you'll observe in my playbooks is that I've modified them from the original. So if you were to look at the original repository and the diff um, to my repository, you would notice that I've added this particular module, the um, SCM source control uh, management. So that's a part of Ansible namespace, the SCM collection, and git underscore retrieve is effectively a git clone that typically you would execute from the command line or from the um, extension in your VS Code. So what we're doing here is we're cloning down uh, this repo, right? This is my forked repo right here. And we're creating this parent directory so that way it is a local repo that exists in the execution, um, which is ephemeral, like it's only available as we run this playbook. We have the Ansible runner, it's live. Um, what we can do is create this directory um, that we've cloned down the att-avd uh, from the repo. And we can make changes to that that ultimately we can push back in to our forked branch of the repo. So it's my master branch. Um, that's what we've cloned down. We're going to register uh, this into memory. So this repository will also include the path. So that way we make that available when we push our changes back to the GitHub, to my forked repository. And delegate to local hosts means that we are not running it against the hosts that are defined for this playbook. The ATD underscore fabric is actually the uh, URL to access the CVP, right? So we, we want to actually run these commands locally. So delegate to local hosts will run them directly from the EE. We only want to run them once against our inventory items locally because we... Um, really can only clone down that directory once, right? Because if you try to clone it down more than once, you'll see an error that that clone director, directory already exists. So once we have that, uh, now what we can do is we can include some of the roles that um, exist in the AVD collection. So the first role here is the EOS designs. And then we have the EOS underscore CLI underscore config gen. So the first one is really like around uh, gathering facts and information. And then we want to take that information and we want to manipulate some files that we're using as the intended configuration um, to configure our um, eBPN VXLAN environment using CVP in the um, Arista test bed, which is a sandbox. Moreover, now that we have these files, we want to copy them from the Ansible runner of a, you know temporary files that we have um, over to our repo directory. So we're going to go ahead and, and copy from source to destination. So you can see as we iterate through these, the source is the temporary runner um, that's been established from the roles. 
And then the destination will be that temp directory where we clone down the ATD-AVD um, folder in, the, in those paths so that way we can have them um, and update them and push them to our GitHub repository. As you can see, as we move down here, I have my credentials and we're using the ansible.scm. So that source control management collection using the git underscore publish. So with the credentials, I'm able to um, also delegate to local host because we're running this locally from the EE and we can push um, that git directory um, back to GitHub. And we just want to do that one time, right? Because we, we don't, there's no need to, to stage commit and push more than once. So we'll push our changes. Once we've pushed our changes, um, we have our changes um, as they now sit you know, in the repo. And we're also able to provision the CVP now using this role, the CV underscore deploy. Um, we'll need our credentials, the lab token that we'll talk about here momentarily to be able to log into the CVP. And we want to do change control. So that will um, create a workspace. So that way, once we push those changes, it'll go through its iterations and um, actually apply those changes to the leaves and spines and the EVPN VXLAN configuration um, with the EOS based routers and sw or switches rather. And we'll see all of that in action. So um, let's go ahead and, and take a quick look at the CV underscore deploy role. So if we go back to AVD and if we look at the roles that are a part of the Arista validated design, we can take a look at the CV deploy um, and its task. And this is what we're actually doing you know, in terms of tasks, we are, um, you know, again, logging into the CVP using the token. Um, and then ultimately what we're doing is we're, we're pushing um, those changes. And you can see that we have different parameters for the workspace and change control. So all of that will be implemented in the AAP. So now that we understand the, the, some of the playbooks and roles um, that are underneath the hood here, let's go ahead and take a look at the AAP. All right, so here's the Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, the Ansible Controller. And what I wanna show you real quick before we start the demo is just a couple of the configuration uh, bits that I had to configure to make this work with the um, AVD. So one of the things I had to do was create a project and I'll provide a link to the directions. Um, there's a couple of different links that will be a part of the YouTube video if you look in the description. But just a you know real quick um, overview of what I needed to do is I created this project and I am pointing it to my forked repository. And if I show you the settings here for this project, you can see that every time prior to running a playbook, I'm going to pull down the latest revision from um, this Git repo from my fort git repo. And uh, when I do that, then I'll have the, you know, the, the latest commit because every time we're making changes to the configs, we're pushing them to the repo and that's what we want to read in when we actually run our playbook on this side, on the AAP side. Um, so that's the project. Um, the project is actually, you know, again, that's where we're getting access to the repo. And then I can use this project for a source for my inventory. So real quick on the inventory, if we look in AVD, and I'll go ahead and do this in YAML format. Um, this is based off of an inventory that's a part of the Arista test drive. What you'll notice if you go to my forked repo, I actually commented out uh, most of the things that were like sensitive. So you won't see any credentials in here. So these are just um, you know variables that are being passed as part of the inventory. But my credentials themselves that are more sensitive, I'm providing them as extra variables in my job template. And a job template is where you manage the playbook. And also you can add extra variables there. So I'm doing that. So that way I'm avoiding committing and pushing anything sensitive into my repo. I could have avoided it by uh, either using like a git ignore or using an Ansible vault um, to encrypt my credentials, but it was easier for me just to use the extra variables. So what I'm talking about in the sense of those are um, from the inventory source itself. And what that is doing is um, it's pointing to this inventory file um, that is a part of my forked repo. And it's going to pull that in um, every time. So I have it set up to sync. So if we go further into here, you can see that I have it set up to sync. And what it's going to do is overwrite 
um, any variables that it has learned from either the inventory or group vars or host vars every time I run this and it's going to update it before we launch the playbook. So the source is a project, but it's dynamic in the sense that we're always looking and pulling down whatever the latest um, information is from the inventory, and again, from the group var variables or the host variables. And ultimately, that's what we're going to use in our inventory. If I take you into the inventory, you can see that if I go into groups, and I'll um, focus in here for a second, you can see there's already information here that was learned um, from that repo. And as we make changes, this information is going to change. So just um, an example here, some group bars. And we look at CV servers, host. This is based off of my um, existing lab environment. All right, uh, here's where things get real. Let's make it real. So what I have here is my local repository, right? So we're actually going to make some configuration changes to our group bars. And specifically, let's look at the ATD underscore fabric. So here we can set some group bars for the configuration for the underlays and overlays. So what I want to do is just turn on OSPF and enable that um, for the underlay. So I'll go ahead and save that one. And refresh or push to the repo, my forked repo, OSPF. Commit, sync. And then we'll take a look in the repo. And if I go into my group bars here, we can see that we just made this change now. Um, the comment message, commit message was OSPF. So just pop in there real quick and we can see that OSPF is turned on. Having done that, let's go ahead and run our job template for deploying CVP that's using the CVP deploy role. So we'll go ahead and kick that off, and I'll show you the order of operations. Uh, the first thing that happens is the source control update. We're pulling down the updated git repo where we just made that configuration change to the group bars. Then subsequently it'll sync up the inventory, and that's how the group bars will be sent um, um, into the inventory to be used for the configuration change. And then ultimately we'll take a look at the playbook run. It worked. Let's validate in CVP by going into the workspace. This is the current one for our timestamp. We can see that the configuration passed a validation with the config lit, so that's kind of like our source of truth. And if we look at the deltas here in the diff, we can see that um, on the left here, this proposed configuration that was brought in to be deployed, um, the changes are to OSPF configuration, so those don't exist, right? So that's the running config before we make the change. And if I move down, we can see that the empty configs are from removing um, the existing configurations that, um, that previously were on the running config. So we have our ads and um, the things that were removed. So that's our diff here. We also can see the change control from here. So this is the completed configurations for um, each one of those devices. So we saw the proposed change, and then this is the actual execution of the change. And lastly, we can see the artifacts in our repo. Artifacts of what we just built. So if I go into the inventory, into the intended configuration, we can see that this was made a minute ago. Um, the configs would represent like our, you know, regular running configs. So if I go into leaf one, we'll notice that we do have some, some OSPF type configurations as we move down right here, as is the case with the structured data configs. All right, so same thing here, we'll look at leaf one. And if we move our way down here as well, we will find um, OSPF. Right here, some OSPF, good old OSPF. So that updated like our artifacts for our intended configurations. So let's go ahead and, and try another config and then we'll look at a validation. This time we're adding this new tenant called tenant B. I went ahead and uncommented all the, the lines here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I saved it. And what I wanna do is commit it. 
sync it. Go back to the repo and let's run uh, one more time our template. All right, let's check it. Go back uh, to workspaces. Here's the current workspace. All right, so this time we can see that we're adding entries that support the new tenant. See tenant B right here. All right, so basically we're adding this new tenant and all the um, associated configurations with that. And if I pop back here into the inventory, we will see that our intended configurations have also been updated. So if I go into structure configs, right, and we go into leaf one, then we will be able to see stuff for tenant B, tenant A, tenant B. There's our tenant B. So from the AAP, I'm unable to access the switches directly in this test bed because um, those are private IPs. I can only access the CVP. So I'm going to go ahead and run from this repository in the sandbox a validation to validate our, our configuration. So I'm going to run this, this playbook in this local repo here. And it's going to go through and um, collect some information to validate. And then what I can do is I can push it to my fork repo, sync it, and if we go to my repo, right, and let me jump over into the inventory over here, we have these reports, and you can see that some of these results just came in now, right, so this is the validation uh, for each one of those leaf nodes and spines. So basically it's validating like the BGP peers and you know other configurations on that device to make sure that they're valid and in compliance. So here we go, we have these reports. So this is a very important um, just component of the ABD is that you can make configuration changes and then you can validate them. Um, with my AAP, if I had an environment that I could touch directly to those switches, then I would also be able to run this from the AAP. So that's the only difference is I needed to run it from within their lab environment so that I could see it. But then ultimately I was able to push that you know, into my repo. So I'm also updating this validation as code. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration to see AAP in action, managing the ABD, the Arista validated design, and using the roles that allow me to deploy and to validate those configurations in the CVP using Ansible. And I hope you saw how easy this is. And please um, take a look at the links as part of the description with additional steps to show you how to get started with the CVP and also how to get started with AAP. Um, take care and I'll see you on the next demo.